hey YouTube, here we are for part six of our limited testing meeting for M21. I'm Lord Tupperware, joined by Mr. Metronome and Quarter Calls from the Limited Level Ups podcast. We're gonna do, this will probably be a, a short video here, just looking at the 10 gold uncommons, and then we'll also briefly talk about some of the artifacts worth chatting about here. But I think worth trying to perhaps order these uh, these 10 cards, or at least dis discuss them in, in some way. So uh, I'll let you, you gentlemen take the reins here. Sure. So, power. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I, I was going to say that I think there's like a clear top three uncommons, and that's like experimental overload, Alpine Huntmaster, and Mentor. Do you yeah, agree I, I agree. With that? I agree with that agree. for sure. Mm -hmm. Probably in I, it, the order doesn't really matter. So, the I think the things to take note of are, are that like. This is just, I think, the most rawly powerful and probably takes the least to set up in terms of like, it's just gonna go in any blue red deck and be pretty dang good. And then, deck building, yeah. And these are just like, they are very powerful two drops in color pairs that want to curve out and beat down. I think experimental overload takes the most set up. Oh, interesting. What blue red decks aren't don't have spells? Some that don't have spells. For it to be really good, I think you want the cheap cantrips. Like yes. you want to be making at least a three three before it's really good. Right, but I, yes, I agree. But I'm, I'm and, just and saying you have to have the shocks and the dragon fires, and you have to have had a shock or a dragon fire in your yard before you cast it. Like, whereas the other the other two like do the thing always a hundred percent of the time when you cast them. I found that any time. I agree that yes, you would like the shock or the dragon fire early, but when you do shock something or dragon fire something and then cast it on turn four, even if it's just a one one, like it it's been pretty backbreaking. Like casting dragon fire twice will destroy a lot of decks. And I it, it also just you know, if you have a bunch of can trippy things, can be a five five in the mid game. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't know. I think it, it takes more setup in game, right? I think the other two take more setup in the draft like if you get more specific cards than overload mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense to me i think the other two are more consistently good i think experimental overload has a higher ceiling yeah that's fair that's fair. okay but that's our top tier right yeah top sure. tier, yep. okay and then tier number two watcher like watcher yeah quaddle quaddle uh, then you, I mean, you could give a nod to Stitcher. I think it's probably the, the tier below though, like where you should be taking it. Right. Power, very powerful. Um, I, guess, I think Patrician goes with Stitcher in terms of like, doesn't get yeah. there a lot, but is powerful when it does. Right. Exactly. And I feel like these last three are just probably in uh, the same tier. Like, I mean, do, do you like Twin Beta Assassins? Cause I, I don't, I haven't, I, I haven't cast the card yet. I like I Twinblade Assassins. I think it's fine. Like, I like Leafkin. Like, Leafkin Avenger has been impressive to me. Yeah, her is very good. I just found the like the home for it is there's not much of a home for it. Mm -hmm. And we should talk. I, I think oh. there is more than that. I I, I think Twinblade Assassins and Avenger are on par with Patrician and Stitcher, if not better. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, yeah, my my I think I would have Avenger ahead of these two because, and perhaps the same would go for twin blade assassins there's just no like this is just good on its own right yeah there's no like there's set up here you can have a white black deck where patrician is not like doesn't get there you can have a blue black deck where stitcher doesn't really get there i mean it's still a looter which is good but, like these two cards are just gonna like do their thing i, I have twin blade assassins slightly ahead of leapkin avenger but that's I think fine they're, yeah that this is how i would order it myself yeah, there's a there's a part of me that wants to swap that like Stitcher tier with the Leafkin tier, just like completely, just because yeah. I think when those cards get there, they are much not much better, but they are better than it, yeah the other two. I think that's that's fair. It's like if we're talking about the ceiling, then these go here. Right, exactly. If we're yeah. talking about the floor, yeah. then these go here. Like yeah, which I think is whatever that 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 context is more important than. Than anything the, else. The thing that I think puts Avenger and Assassins over Stitcher and Patrician is that they just come with stats. Yes. Like, yeah. And, and have a powerful effect on the game. Twin Blade mm -hmm. Assassins even more so than Avenger. Uh, we should talk. We, we put these cards here. We didn't really talk about them. I mean, again, Watch of the Spheres has a similar uh, description as, as Mentor and Houndmaster, though the ceiling is not as hot 
as these cards is. Like, this just really... It's a 2-mana 2-2 flyer in a deck that, again, wants to... I think there could be blue-white control decks, but that generally wants to just curve out and beat down, and the snowball effect is real on turn two. Yeah, just, like, all of the the, no, the fancy things on this card aside, like, 2-mana two 2-2 two, two flyer is very good in this format, uh, and then the other stuff is yeah, also, just, just, you know, gravy, gravy on top. Yeah, and Coatl really, I mean, it does get there in blue-green. <laughs> Aside from folks, like myself included, irrationally loving this card, like <laughs> this is a very good format for this card, I think. Just stop like, splashing this card. <laughs> yes, please. Please, I, I beg of you. <laughs> I beg of you, stop splashing this card. A three-mana 2-2 two, two is not something you want to splash. This wants to come down on turn three every game. Yeah, the like, only two around, of these cards I think that you could think about splashing is Experimental Overload and maybe Twin Blade Assassins. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And and this just doesn't get there at all. It's I fine. think it does. It's fine in black red. Yeah, it's, it's a fine card. It's not it, it, it is scary. It, it it is mostly a <laughs> kind of eggs basket e card. It's not so much like look at the sweet value I'm getting. It's more just like I'm attacking with a five power creature each turn starting on turn three. Yeah. Right. I, I guess I haven't seen it in play that much, but when I have, it has not been impressive. I would say it's C plus power level. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. All right. So those are the uncommons. And now I just want like the, these you are want all... to screenshot that. No, mm, not really. Okay. Sorry. That's no, okay. So here we've got the. I mean this this land to represent all the the ETB tap gain lands. And then all the colorless commons and uncommons. I'm not super interested in ordering these because a lot of them are are kind of junk. I think there are a few that I'd like to talk about, uh, namely, namely these three: short sword, sky scanner, and palladium mirror. Right. Um, so let's let's start with short sword. What's up with this card in this format? Is this on me? Is this my? That's, on, that's on you, Alex. Yeah. You, are, you are the the champion of the short sword. Yeah. So. I yeah, this is a, a good card. This is a good format for short sword because uh a few reasons, right? The the creatures are fairly small going up the curve. So, you know, the creatures do not scale in a manner where your you know, your four power creatures or your four CMC creatures are always gonna outscale your two power your two CMC creature, but it'll be like slightly bigger, right? So you'll get like a three three for four. Uh, and then your 2-2 two -two is going to be a 2-2 two -two for 2 mana. So Short Sword makes all of your 2-2s two trade or uh, either attack past or attack into like the 4 and 5 mana creatures a lot of the time. And it also just dominates combat when you're like a 2 aggro decks uh, facing up against each other. Like Because like, your 2-2s two will be able to attack past their 2-2s two and you, know, put, you put it on blocks and you have a 3-3 three -three on blocks. So I'm happy playing 2 Short Swords in basically all of my white decks and then sometimes like my green decks turns on drowsing tyranidon which is really important putting it on like a one power flyer is nice so it's it's a card that it, it i'm taking it at like a c plus level these days because i think people are starting to catch on that this is a good card in the format yeah i agree with that i think next up i want to chat about palladium mirror which i i am a, a real fan of um, again i think for similar reasons of a visionary being able to ramp from um from three to five, obviously Mirror can ramp from from th three to six. Uh, if you if it's you yeah. get there, it's explosive. And and surprisingly, for a format with not a ton of mana sinks, I have not found the effect to be dead. Like I feel like you get the use out of it for a couple turns if it comes down on turn three. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, it's just like it, it, it is very scary when an opponent plays turn three play to Mirror. You you feel you feel like uh oh, what are they going to do? Might be awful for me, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then I think you f guys are not a fan of Skyscanner, right? Yeah, I feel pretty strongly that three mana for a 1-1 flyer is not enough stats for investing three mana into a card. And I think you're, you're essentially spending three mana to cycle and maybe chump block. Like, if you think about Skyscanner as a three mana revitalize, like, all of a sudden it doesn't look so good, right? Mm -hmm. So I do... I, I agree I don't like the card in this format as much as I did last time we saw it, but I think I'm slightly higher on it than uh, than Ben is. I think that... So so you're like... I, I think I'm playing this card a percentage of the time as like my 20 to 23rd card, either in, you know, those... You know, a dirtly deck, just to be like chump or get in a few points. Um, 
or I think it's fine in red white or like a, a, some sort of aggressive deck because like you you know you have Bastard's Acolyte or you have Short Sword and it, like it, it gains you velocity to draw into your cards that help you attack well. So like it's not a great card there, but it's also I don't think it's unplayable. I don't think it's unplayable. Certainly, I think you're hoping to not include it everywhere except maybe a red black deck. Yeah, and then, then yeah, it has like green. slight red black synergies. I I don't know. I I think it's it's not a card I'm actively looking for, but like you you yeah you can play it whatever. Yeah, I I liked it in blue green quite a bit. Um, the rest of these, I guess, perhaps Chrome Replicator. Like I like this card. I don't think it gets there very often, and you don't want to. You don't want to take it and then try and get there. You want to have gotten there and then take it, is my philosophy. Yeah, <laughs> agree. And then anything else among these that, that jumps out as something that, there's something you want to talk about? Epitaph Golem's on my bucket list. Yeah, I I think, again, Epitaph Golem, Epitaph Golem is another one of those ones where once the format has some time to breathe and I think the aggressive cards get spread out amongst you know the rest of the table and it's not just like the three people at the table that know what's up taking them all and getting busted decks i think that uh epitaph golem probably has a place not like you know last time we saw this this was like a deck i don't think it's quite like a deck but it's also probably can play that role of just like this like super late game card that once when if you have enough removal spells and draw spells like this is your card yeah, I'm gonna. I have to say that I don't. See it. I don't see it happening, gents. But uh, I think it, but I appreciate the optimism. It, yeah, the problem is it goes in the, the the deck that best tears through itself that much is the Sanctum deck, and once you assemble Sanctum Tron, you don't need Epitaph Column. Yeah, it's also a good sideboard card, right? Just like against two, it's it's a way to combat that. Sure. Yeah. All right. So that is the uh, the colorless and the gold uncommons.